Well, over these last few weeks, we've been uh, looking at, talking about, and hopefully putting into practice um, BLESS. And we started that with an overview of BLESS, and then we looked in a lot more detail at each of those uh, BLESS practices. So begin with prayer, um, listen, eat together, serve, and share your story. And I trust that you're already seeing fruit from pursuing those BLESS practices. And it's been great hearing all the stories of, of what God has been doing, but I also, hope that you've been able to, over these last six or seven weeks to form a habit in your life of of doing those missional practices um, so that we can continue well beyond this series but we're finishing the series by looking again at um, what our motivation is for all of this and crucially that we are to be motivated by love and that's what stands out for me from zoe's story that we just heard and that was shown on sunday that when Angela invited her to Alpha, Zoe very much saw that and received that as an act of love on Angela's part. She saw it as a really loving thing for her to do. Zoe in turn received the love of God and she is now being very intentional about loving and reaching out to others. So the motivation for this is love and um, just a welcome back for this discussion to Richard's Lodge and to Jen Swallow. Thank you for joining me again for this discussion. So let's start with this, uh, this question. When you've but had the opportunity to have conversations um, about Jesus with people. And I know both of you, through doing Bless, have experienced uh, a, a lot more of that as well. Yeah. Um, what motivations have been at work? Is it always purely motivated by love? Jen, what do you think? I think I'm wary of myself um, that I'm not doing it out of pride. Um, what I mean by that is I don't want to do it because I think I'm, I'm better than someone else. I want to do it because I know what I have in Christ is better and, and I want them to have that as well. But I think that would be my biggest concern is just keeping myself in check that it's, it's not coming from a place of thinking that, that I or anything I could do makes me better than them. Yeah, coming from that place of superiority. Yeah. Right, that's a that's a very very good point actually yeah Richard what do you think <clears throat> I agree with Jan I think sometimes there can be mixed motives but Paul talks about boasting in the gospel rather than boasting in ourselves and I'm genuinely excited about the gospel because it's completely changed my life what God's done in my life has completely changed every aspect of it is changed my my past my, my what I do now and my outlook for the future and I am motivated by a, a desire that, that people don't get to the end of their lives and find that they're eternally separated from a God who really genuinely loves them and, yeah. and is so good and could have done so much in their lives that yeah. that is a big motivation for me I don't like thinking about that but that is a reality mm. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I think it's really important. I think we approach people like you were saying, Jen, from that perspective of we're all broken people, mm. and I have been blessed by God. I want you to know that, rather than I've got the answers. You're you need to hear the answers. Let me tell you the the answers. You know, it's it's, it's it is the motivation. I think for me, uh, another form of pride can be at play as well, or a form of egotism, really, which is the whole thing of thinking this will give me a great story to tell. Do you know what I mean? And, and of course we do, and part of the aim of this series is that everybody has missional stories to tell because that shows that actually God has been at work, but that's not to be the primary thing. Yeah. And I know sometimes I've started to have a conversation with somebody and in my mind I'm thinking, oh, this will be a great story to tell <laughs> on Tuesday in the staff meeting. I think, no, 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 that's not, that's not the motivation. It is, it is about loving this person I'm speaking to and wanting the very best for them because yeah. I've received the best from God. Yeah, absolutely. What about times when you've had the opportunity to talk about Jesus, but you've kept quiet. What, what motivations can be at play there? It's mixed. Sometimes I think it's actually good motivations and sometimes not so good. I think because we, we have, to some extent, God's love for other people, we want to do the best. We want to pick the best time to tell people. Yeah. But also, we're fearful that by saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, we might jeopardize the relationship and we so treasure that relationship. So I think that's one motivation. I think another is, I know when, or when, I've, when I've been in secular work and I've had opportunities, I've tried to pick, well, when is the most respectful time to speak yes. to somebody? Okay. So sometimes if there's a, there's a discussion and it's in a large group, I haven't always pitched in 
with, say, a God or the God perspective at that moment, because I think actually I think people are more open and it's more respectful to have one to one conversations and maybe pick that conversa- conversation up later on. Mm. So I think it's mixed motives. Yeah. Okay. Mm. For me, it would be fear of, of what the other person thinks. Yeah. And which actually in itself is coming back to pride in a way, isn't it? Because I'm caring more about what someone thinks of me than their eternal salvation or what they think of Christ. Mm. So again, um, yeah, I think probably for me when I've not taken chances that I've looked back and they were clearly chances placed in front of me, it's probably been because I've, I've been worried about what someone would think, which yeah. is a shame. <laughs> Yeah, but it's very natural. I think there's a big thing in our society or a belief that's put out there that actually, you know, you can't really talk to people about Jesus mm. because that's a bit weird. If you, it, I think it's the same as we've talked about previously with prayer. Um, sometimes we hold back from saying to people, can I pray for you for that? Or I've been praying for you. But, but the overwhelming experience is that when you do that, actually people see it as a great kindness. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I'd love you to pray for me. Thank you. Um, and I think it's the same with talking about Jesus, especially when uh, in, in last week's... Um, groups discussions when we're talking about stories the sentences up your sleeve and being out that just being a very natural part of conversation well you know actually the thing i love about jesus is Mm -hmm. is this or actually this is what i really love about the church or i would not have got through this time without jesus i think if if it's part of our life it's very natural to mention jesus in conversation Uh, so yeah so fear is absolutely uh can be a motivation or a a barrier Mm -hmm. um but i think that is something we need to really try to overcome so bless, doing bless and continuing bless is all, it's really is all about evangelism. We said right at the beginning, actually, if you're pursuing bless, you are engaging in evangelism. Mm, yeah. It just sounds a lot less scary because mm-hmm. we look at it and think, I can do that. But what do you think is the definition of success in evangelism? Jen, what do you think? Um, that's a good question. I think it would, uh, I, would, I would define it by small, small steps that I'm taking Um, I think just as a parent looks at a child and they don't necessarily look at the end result if their child has tried their hardest and and done the best they can. And I think uh, I trust that God is watching me. He knows my heart. He knows my mind. And he knows when I'm trying. He knows when I'm making an effort, when I'm taking a step of courage, when I'm making a decision to do something. So even those small little steps, you could call them small wins. um, I think even that is a success. and, And then we can know that God is still at work in that person's life and and that he uses our little offerings and he multiplies them and he blesses them and and he will bless that person. That's great. Richard, what do you think? Oh, I don't think there's one answer to that. Um, But I think part of it is what it's when Peter writes in 1 Peter 3, he says, always be prepared to give an answer uh, to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have and do this with gentleness and respect. And I think success in evangelism is where our lifestyles actually provoke people to ask questions yes. rather than necessarily forcing answers where there's no question. And to do it with gentleness and respect rather than to pile in and you know, unintentionally maybe even annihilate the, the other person. So I think those elements are a part of success in evangelism. Yeah, yeah there's, uh, I remember a long time ago somebody talking about the Engel scale. You know, the angle scale uh, and it's a kind of a, a scale of looking at how close people are to God or to faith um, and the point being that you could take somebody from having absolutely no interest whatsoever in faith or in Jesus and if you are part of them moving from that step to just having some mild curiosity about it well that's they're closer to faith. Mm. And so it's not seeing it as oh, I have to seal the deal. Although, of course, we shouldn't use it as an excuse to not seal the deal if mm. that's appropriate and if mm. you get the opportunity. But I think that success is that, like Richard said, we are living this yeah. and demonstrating yeah. it to people and they're asking questions. And uh, actually, we're part of their journey. We're part of small steps. It's only God who can bring anyone to faith. We can't, we can't do that. So final question. We've, we've come to the end of our blessed series, but certainly not to the end of bless so how would you encourage people to continue with bless well since we've been doing it i've seen i've had more opportunities and even even for people for whom i've been praying for years and i think it's a very obvious answer just keep persevering Mm. i mean we're we're encouraging the word to persevere and to realize we don't do the saving 
Yeah. We, we do the witnessing and God does all the saving. So it's, it's to give him the bit that he needs to do mm-hmm. and for us to continue the, to, to do the bits that we can, like, like, like praying and listening and, and sharing and, yeah. and being mm-hmm. hospitable. Yeah. yeah. And we've used the word intentionality quite a lot, at least yeah. in the beginning. And, um, and intentionality is great, but then you have to be intentional about continuing to be intentional. I think back to um, a small group I did. I think one of the first terms in the new small group system, and it was uh, the 10 second rule. We went through the book as a group um, and it was great. And so we were all kind of, the principles were there in the forefront of our mind. Um, And I haven't completely forgotten about it. There have been times where it's not been so at the front of my mind and I've forgotten, but then something I see or something I do reminds me of it. And then it comes to the front of my mind again. So I think we need to find practical ways that we can remind ourselves because we will get bogged down with life and we will forget. It could be um, an electronic reminder. It could be a post-it note on a mirror, Mm. perhaps um, a specific friend or two friends and you decide that you're going to remind each other every once in a while. I think if we can find practical ways of just bringing it to the forefront of our mind every once in a while and then we can be intentional about continuing to be intentional. No, absolutely. I think I think we do make the time for the things that we see as really important mm. in our lives. And for me, the, it, it would be the doing it together aspect. Yeah. That's right. Continue doing it with others. You know, our hope is that small groups will continue to ask the question every week, even though we're not focusing on blessed, but every week, who have you blessed this week? To continue doing this journey with others, that is absolutely key to maintaining that accountability and keeping it at the forefront of our minds. Mm. Thank you both i've got to wrap that up here um thank you both for your your contributions to the discussion so so there we are we've come to the end of the blessed series but as we've made very clear that is not the end of bless and the intention is very much to continue with bless because this is part and parcel of following jesus and we all have people in our lives who don't know him and who we want to see saved baptized and bringing others along we want to make disciples who make disciples and that's not a seven week thing that's a long-term journey Uh, to make disciples who make disciples. Hopefully you've been thinking and planning as a small group about how you can serve your community, bless your community in some way, or put on an event, an evening to which you can invite non-believers sometime in December. If you haven't started to plan that, great time to start doing that now. Um, There's also Carols at Kings that will be coming up on the 9th and the 16th of December. Just a great event, easy invitation, great thing to invite people to. Um, and there's an alpha course that's going to be running next term. Again, a great thing to invite people to. So there's lots of next steps that you can you can invite people to uh, who are responding to you to you blessing them. So let's keep blessing people. Let's keep going with this. Let's keep intentionally loving those whom God has put in our lives, loving them like Jesus loves them, praying for them, listening to them, eating together, serving them, sharing our story with them. And uh, let's keep pursuing this and let's just see what God will do.